get started. Uh, so this is one of the uh, the setups I mentioned last week on our parts that one of the considerations with lathe is how we're going to space these out, especially with the our tool holders. That as these tools vary in length, and depending on how much we're able to project the part, maintain the chatter, uh, the finish, uh, the tolerances, you know, pretty much going through that uh, that process. Uh, let's see, there's the uh, the next one. The other thing is not running the tools into the uh, the front of the, the lathe, into the sheet metal. And um, the one time that uh, when I first set this up, I wasn't really thinking about it, and I put two of these together. When it was finishing this drill, the ER call it was clearing that chuck job by about, I don't know, 16th of an inch, that little sound that really makes you nervous. Like, I probably shouldn't do that again. It's better than the sparky, grindy, crunchy noises, but a clear inch is as good as a mile, right? <laughs> So, you know, it's it's one of those, yeah, you know, it's not for the faint of heart, though. So, um, let's see, there's the, um, the part. So, these are um, one and an eighth inch 12 threads. They're basically a class three fit. So, uh, you know, we're dealing with a one inch 249 to one inch 250 tolerance on the, uh, the OD. Uh, pitch diameter comes in and it is, you know, basically plus or minus nothing. These are so smooth going into a normal tap that um, a normal tap hole that there is no radial or axial movement. So um, the the issue with both of these then is that the uh, the half twenty that follows in the center five thousandths uh, positional tolerance. So basically on center line, which is easy enough to hold, but again it, it needs to end up being a class three fit for. Um, uh, for the end uh, end part, so it's uh, it's been a challenge to uh, to run through these. But as you're going through that process, those are the things to think about. Taps going that deep, those are going to be sticking out that far. We have plenty of clearance, and until well, if I keep quit jumping around, when we do the tap or when we do the um, the turning facing tool, I, I thought I had another one with the uh, the threads in there. Maybe not. All right, so the threading tool is about the the same distance. So we're getting pretty close to the to the head. We got all of those those clearances to think about. So this is definitely a five percent uh, rapid moves, uh, five percent moves uh, as it's uh, as it's making these cuts. All right. So it's a little a uh, little background. Uh, again, these are fairly simple parts. The you know the intent is just to get you in that mindset. Um, I mentioned I did not post the uh, the video, but I mentioned we may add an optional at the end to drill and tap these just so that we have it in the mix. And what I spaced on last time was the, the, the separate library for those, those larger drills and those, uh, those taps. So last time we, uh, we just drew the lines and we kind of connected the dots. If we want to go through, this part is a little bit simpler. If we want to go through to the points and uh, see if we can uh, make those work, we're pretty much just going to, uh, to divide these, um, uh, to the to the radiuses and draw what we have. So, so for our part, we get the uh, the print going here. Um, last time, like I said, we just drew the other uh, lines. This time, I want to run through it a little more. Like we're going to go from zero to one over to our next points. Give you an illustration why the other mechanism may be offsetting. You know, the other strategy offsetting those lines, offsetting those distances may be a little bit faster in the long run. All right, so right now we are in X and Y, and I kind of went back and forth with setting the machine, but the machine, um, you know, kind of have, have those expectations from other programs that when you go to D and Z, that the D values, you know, will automatically divide by two. Not quite so. So it was one of those things you'd want to verify that you're entering the, the correct data. So I don't think there's any advantage to telling it right to go into the um, or to go right into the uh, the lathe. So line from zero zero, and if I um, go into the um, uh, the coordinates zero to point five for our first radius, uh, it's kind of green blue on green there, so that's a little bit uh, hard to see. Pick our next endpoint. And we'll be going out two and a half in X and comma to one inch in, I'm sorry, yeah, I'll still 
Still thinking Z getting uh, crossed over to uh, my D's and my X's. And I told it to go the wrong way. So if I draw it that way, so let's just um, control Z. No, nope. I can draw it that way and mirror it. And that doesn't sound like fun though. All right, line from endpoint. I will remember to put in the uh, the negative, so minus two and a half, comma one. What's that? And then the next uh, line will be from that endpoint, and we're going out horizontal, so that will go to um, minus three point five, comma one. All right, we're picking up that endpoint again. And so we're staying at 3.5, and we are going to two and a half, so one and a quarter. And I guess I better make that a negative before I do the exact same thing again. All right, from my endpoint, and then we go back over to the next. Uh, that'll still be at the uh, the one and a quarter. We go to minus 4.8. And 1.25. I'll select your endpoint, running out of room there. So uh, the minus 4.8. And this is going up to 3.75. So here we go, doing math in my head. I don't know if I can do the 3.75 divided by 2, but I think that's going to be 1.875. Any takers? <laughs> Let's see, three and a half would be 1.75, and another eighth would put it at 1.875. So I'm hoping for the best. I'm <laughs> hoping for the best. <laughs> I always worry when I start doing math in my head because I think I know what I'm doing. And then I find out very quickly that um, probably not so much. All right, minus 5.175, and we are going to two and a quarter, 2.25. All right, and then our endpoint, we'll just make that a vertical and bring it back since it's not quite grabbing the line. We'll just bring it back to the origin. That'll stop it at the, um, the x-axis and we go ahead and hit okay. All right, so we have a, um, a fillet and a, and a uh, chamfer. Uh, let's go with the, uh, the chamfer first is 30 thousandths by 45. So distance and O3. And we're going to pick our two objects. Well, either I really got something or that 0.03 uh, is pretty small. That looks quite a bit bigger like they went uh, half. So my assumption is that a 0.03 would be a radial dimension, not a diametral. So, um, well, I'm going to stick with that one until I figure out better. Let's see what the half inch radius, since I'm uh, I'm cruising through this. Drawing, not the scale. Ah, yeah, let's do that. <laughs> do not scale drawing as opposed to. <laughs> All right, so that one looks pretty good. So. All right, so let's uh, pop back over and take a, a quick look. Yeah, no, it's saying 0 0.03 by 45, and let's see, we said uh, 2. So, yeah, to me that looks probably closer to a 16th, maybe even uh, a little bit bigger. We get what we get. All right, so that sets up my geometry, or at least close enough. That's the, um, you know, kind of the... Uh, the downsides of the strategy is I'm entering all those values, the offsets, you know, we're connecting the dots. You can kind of pick which one works, uh, works better for you. All right, so when we go into the machine and we pick for the lathe and our default, then it's switching over to the D and Z. And what I would like to check is if we, uh, let's just grab the end and hit an F4. All right, so... D is at one inch, so it scaled up. All right, so when I went over, that was my concern, you know, saying that I'm expecting it to uh, 
to be a little bit, um, you know, to, am I doing radial or am I doing diametral? So since that ended up at one inch, I would have sworn I told it that that was a half an inch in, in X and Y. I have to go back and watch my own videos now. All right, so that is probably a pretty good indicator going on with the O30 that since that looks about half and, you know, we'll see what it, uh, what it does. So let's go ahead and scale it. Uh, let's go ahead and, and do one more. So the other one would be if I do the F4, is this really out at minus 5.175? All right, so it is. So I can't scale it in half. Uh, let's see, what did I do with the other uh, numbers? And F4 one more time. So one to two inches. All right, so am I going to be able to get away with moving all of that down in a half an inch and see what we can do? Yeah, I'm going to try it and then uh, see how bad I messed this up. <laughs> all right, so let's move. And we're going to go um, in D minus... 0.5. All right, so F4, and we're at D of 2. So, yeah, I managed to, uh, to mess that up. Yet. All right, so my worst case uh, scenario, F4, we are going from half an inch to one inch, and OK. Let's go back into F4, and the one and a half and one and a half goes to one. All right, so all right, so the minus three and a half, and then we are at one, and because that chamfer ended up in there. Then the D goes back to the 1.25. All right, so we went from one inch. Oh, no, nope, I got to remember now that I'm in in the diametral, so we're going to two. Four. So two and two. And with the radius and the tip, let's check that last one. A four. We're at three point two five. And that one should have been three point seven five. Oh, I'm gonna have this all messed up before we're done. And the uh, the outside diameter went to four and a half. All right, so we'll do the last line. All right, so that one was still the radius. We're at uh, two inch diameter. I'll pick that out. Okay, you will do a much better job than I just did. And, um, you know, I guess the uh, the illustration, you know, a little better than I, and worked a little better than I intended it to, that um, when you're switching from the uh, the X, Y to the, to the D and the Z, that you have to be careful. So uh, even if this is still a little bit, uh, yeah, this is definitely uh, not to scale. <laughs> All right, we'll figure it out as we go. All right, so I left uh, a little bit of a, uh, a tab there. I am going to go ahead and, uh, and delete that out and see if uh, putting it back in. No, that still looks pretty small, so... 
Anyway, the numbers are playing out for me, even though it looks a little bit strange. So I'm going to go back and check it after we finish. But let's go ahead and go through the operations. Oh, we've got one more here. I'm trying to forget. Okay, where did it go? Okay, I think I just accidentally deleted it. <laughs> All right, there we go. <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead and clear those colors so that we can get a little better view. Gray up over. All right. So uh, our properties, we're going to go through the uh, the same thing. Now on this one, we went to look for those defaults, and I found it in the 2018, but I did not find it in the 2020 for the um, uh, the machine control definition to set our defaults somewhere in there. It is uh, it is available. So when we do the tool settings, again, if I find I'm changing this um, each of these every time, the warn of duplicate, warn on um, uh, tool or orientation, uh, any of those things, setting our default materials, I'm going to go ahead and uh, try and build that into the uh, to the machine. All right, our stock setup, left spindle. We go into the properties. And the properties should give us another pretty good indicator if I've uh, if I've got this uh, correct. So if we go with the four and a half inch stock and length, uh, let's go with uh, seven or eight inches. And we're going to shift the uh, the position by at least thirty thousandths uh, to give it a little extra stock. And the default four and a half that looks pretty good. We got the extra material. So as long as I didn't hose up the uh, the other diameters too bad, and we're we're in pretty good shape. All right, so I'm making a pretty good case that the can cycles are going to be your better choice. <laughs> All right, so for the properties, uh, for the uh, for the jaws, let's uh, stay with the defaults and uh, outside parameter four and a half, and we'll set it at uh, at six. That's uh, going to be minus six. So we see our jaws holding it in place. And again, the jaws are kind of for visual reference. Uh, if you're working close to the jaws or need to hold on to that material, maybe the seven inches isn't going to be deep enough. So, you know, we, we can make that decision. Are we going to have enough clamping force, enough pressure to hold on and keep this um, running on center? Yes. Is that negative six your projection of your material? No, that is this vice jaw or the uh, the chuck jaw uh, shadow silhouette line. Okay. So if I were to bring that up, we were at 5.175 for our um, our number. If I bring that up to 5.25 and then uh, hit tab, that's telling me, you know, in in, res in one respect, that I'm probably going to bring in a parting tool and run square into that jaw. You know, as a as a visual. So. If we're working a little bit away and it's not a uh, you know that much of a consideration, again you know the what you're portraying it as on the uh, the screen is there to keep you in that same mindset. The way it gets set up at the machine and actually run may may be two different things. So you know I want to try and make it as uh, realistic as possible. All right. So as it updates the the stock, as you know if it comes down to a collision with the uh, with the chuck jaw. It'll give us those warnings and you know, hopefully do a little bit better. Can you set up master cam to understand the, the tool projections for in indexed parts? I guess really long reamers or drills that are indexed for cutting. Um, Can you set up collision controls for that? Based on that? Yeah, I think so. Just probably a yeah, there's um, within the uh, the tool definitions uh, and also where we're setting the home positions. I know with um, uh, like the um, the indexable carbide uh, drill bits, if you want to come back and treat it as a boring bar, it will accept that and give you the offsets and be able to do those dual type of things and look for, for collisions with that uh, that tool. Still have to account for your drill tips. Still have to account for the depth of the, the bore. But it's, um, you know, there's some of it, but it ultimately... When you walk out to the machine, you are responsible for the collisions. <laughs> All right, so these are, you know, I said pretty straightforward. Uh, you know, one of the considerations is, you know, are we going to be able to get into that square corner with an eight thousandths or a, 
uh, you know, the 16,000 nose radius. Um, probably not, but we're going to bring it in as close as we can. All right, and so uh, when we pick our uh, our tools, you know, we can pretty much do all of this with uh, with the uh, the one setup, and I went right to to mill, which is my habit, and we're going to do the um, the rough operation. Oh, sorry, get, get into my sequence here. Lathe path always starts with a face. All right, so if this is a saw cut edge, if this has rough geometry, we're always pushing that nose back and establishing that first. If I can't get that face to clean up, then I don't need to spend the time to, um, uh, to do all of that roughing only to find the last little bit or that I just ran the tool into into stock that wasn't supposed to be there. So um, tool number one, we'll stay with the uh, the defaults and um, we you know we like to keep our um, the tool definitions pretty um, uh, pretty close to what we have on the uh, the turret. So one of the things that uh, I would try to do on my tool library is you know actually get the uh, the insert information, get the uh, the holder information, so that we're as uh, you know, we're not just picking generic tools. We're, we're doing geometry that is uh, very similar. At its core, we're programming to the tooltip. So the rest of this is for our visual reference. So maybe not a, you know, 100% uh, required to be if I just pick a general tool. But if it's something that's going to come in tight or needs that clearance, we need to be a little more particular about it. So... Uh, on the uh, the roughing pass, still on this uh, this size of material. If we're going into the aluminum, uh, I'm going to back it off a little bit, and we'll go down to uh, to five thousandths. So I'm always uh, balancing that uh, as we're doing the constant surface speed. That at four and a half inches, we will probably at 200 surface feet per minute. Four and a half inches, we may only see. Two or three hundred RPM with that five thousandths per revolution. By the time it gets down to the half inch, we're going to be up at the 16, 18, maybe even approaching the you know whatever we set as our max limit. Uh, like I said last time, I'm not sure of many lays with a 10,000 RPM spindle. That is a little scary. All that rotating mass, and that would be one of the considerations here. Is I just told it that this is an OD chuck job when in reality it's probably going to be flipped around and we're going to be um, holding on this first step. So that may be something I want to go back and, uh, and revisit. But at 6,000 RPM, all this rotating mass, that's going to be a little, uh, little scary. So um, I think most of the standard is going to be about 3,000 unless you have a high-speed machine. What was that? Well, it's true. The force might open your jaws. And you're, and you're dealing with the jaws. So one of the things that uh, our machine says is, you know, uh, grab the grease gun and grease these hydraulic jaws every week. And that should be something that you never, uh, uh, you know, never skimp on is that you go and, uh, uh, you know, make sure that it has that, uh, that clamping pressure and that hydraulic pressure uh, to match them. And then even the same with the soft jaws. I was at a shop, uh, I thought he had 600 RPM, you put 6,000. <laughs> oh, no. The part was about the size of the foster. Oh geez, and, it's about uh, three. Next thing you know, you hear it slamming all around. We were on the other side of the shop. Yeah, and that's a noise. The bench hiding, and this thing inside yeah. the machine and it went out of plexiglass wall. Oh, oh geez. Eighteen foot ceiling. We're like watching all this going on, and he's just hiding. Yeah. <laughs> no, when things go bad, they go very bad. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't hiding. So starting off on it's easy to miss that decimal point. It's easy to uh to put in an extra zero. Um you know, we're always gonna start it. I would rather see you starting off slow, building up into it, and uh, then scaring yourself after you've uh, you've run two or three of the parts. All right, so um, even with the uh, the carbide 200 surface speed, we might bump that up to uh, to 400 for the roughing, which will give us a little bit more to uh, work from. The max spindle speed of three is going to be a little, little bit, but again, a four and a half inch um, uh, rotating mass. Maybe I would say that you know I don't want to see that thing go over 2,000. 
that's going to set in the parameter your max RPM is 2000. It won't exceed that. So I've got to think about the code, but it's um, in the first, you know, the, yeah, we're, yeah, G50. So um, I read down through it and I recognize them. I don't pull those quite as easily off the top of my head. So it, we, we set that as the max. <laughs> <laughs> now the um, yes, yeah, the same thing is when a mill guy goes over to a lathe or a lathe guy goes over to a mill, you just kind of look over their shoulder a little bit more cautiously. <laughs> All right, so let's move on. So uh, the tin and the tin, we have enough clearance to uh, retract the tool out. Um, I would, again, rather see that be more and something that I could edit at the control to uh, kind of adjust where those um, uh, that home position needs to uh, start and return to. Uh, face parameters, then uh, we're just going to use the uh, the stock. Uh, I won't get too button happy this time, so 100 thousandths, uh, finish step over the overcut amount. Uh, you know, again, if we have an eight or a sixteen thousandths nose radius, we'd want to go over by at least that radius. So if I give it twenty thousandths, it's usually going to be enough. And then the retract amount uh, should just pull straight back. But if we wanted to do an angle as well, then we go over to the lead in, lead out. Lead ins should be fine, and the um, the angle coming out, I can pull it back forty five degrees and another hundred thousandths, and we'll see what that looks like. All right, so I go ahead and hit OK. Facing operation comes in. I can verify that it overran, and then it's going to retract out at a 45 and then do a, a straight uh, straight retract. All right, so we get a little extra clearance. Now we'll go into the roughing. I haven't tried the uh, the dynamic roughing on this, so just like the, uh, the dynamic on the mill, it should be interesting to see what they come up with. Um, our... Operations are going to be to the uh, the end, so I pick the uh, the first uh, segment. We accept it and pick the last uh, the last segment. Um, if we're in aluminum, I'm probably going to rough and finish with the same tool. And um, you know, if we if we're experiencing the tool breakdown, the wear, then we would set up uh, another tool for the um, uh, for the finish pass. Again, based on the mass, I probably don't want to go over 2,000 RPM. Uh, feed rate for for the um, uh, the rough. I'm still going to go to the cautious side and say the the 5,000s and the 400. All right, and then our roughing parameters. Again, you're going to have to check at the uh, the lathe. Are you taking uh, this uh, depth of cut of 100 thousandths off of the diameter? Or are you taking it radially and taking 200 thousandths off the diameter? It's always a question, something that you want to uh, to check before you just get uh, you know, a, little, a little carried away with it. So uh, in that case, I would tell it maybe 50 thousandths uh, for the depth of cut, 100 thousandths off the diameter. And then if I find that the uh, the tool... It's very easy to come back if the tool is uh, making that cut, not having any issues. Very easy to come back and bump that up to 100 if I find that I'm only taking 25. Stock to leave for cleanup, 10 thousandths and 10 thousandths. Entry mount of 100 thousandths. Um, we could overrun it a little bit on the, uh, the exit amount, but because it's kind of coming off on that angle, on that angle, we um, you know, maybe give it another, another 50. And again, how round is our four and a half inch material? Chances are it's it's a pretty good egg shape or maybe even a little bit elliptical. So uh, it just depends on how critical because we're coming to that point. We'll uh, we'll see. And we have something that we could um, uh, either clamp or chuck up into a manual lathe just to take that last finish pass if we had to. Yes. That exit amount is going to maintain that same angle? I believe so. An angle? Okay. Yeah, it's going to bring it off. And um, if the material was oversized, you know, that we're telling it to uh, to rough. And that's the one that I did not, um, yeah, that it's going to come over 50,000. Now, these are the roughing passes. So uh, I may have just told you wrong that it's going to overrun uh, on the uh, the first. If it doesn't see that stock, it may not, um, may not do so. It's a see what you get for the, uh, for the tool path and adjust accordingly if it's not doing what you want. 
All right, so since the lead in, lead out checked, we're going to come in and uh, verify 180 degrees, length of 100 thousandths. So starting off in uh, in open air, and then the uh, the lead out that 45 degrees with a length of 100 thousandths. So if it passes over by 50 and then comes back, but as it's working in, leaving that 10 thousandths of stock on the wall, it should only bring it up to that point and then retract out. So let's see, we have those um, plunge parameters. There's nothing in there that's a, uh, a pocket or anything that we have to, uh, to worry about. Uh, but we can tell it, do we want to completely ignore if there was grooves, if there was um, you know, other geometry, how we want to, uh, to manage those. And then um, on the stock recognition, let's go ahead and... Um, Let's see. Well, this one, well, we haven't cut anything except for the face at this point. So let's just see it at uh, remaining stock. All right. So we take a bunch of passes. There's the 50 thousands to the, uh, to the first. So the blue lines are bringing it in and then up and over and back. So as you're reading those, uh, those rapid moves, those, um, those finish moves, and because of the um, uh, the nose radius that was defined in the tool, we're expecting it to overrun just a little bit. All right, but we're going to be able to compensate and um, and manage those with the uh, the tool and at the control. Our finish pass. Now let's uh, let's try that dynamic uh, dynamic rough. So I do want to uh, to go ahead and hide that one. Said I haven't uh, tried the dynamic rough, so. We will see what it uh, what it does, and I'm looking for the last. And the issue here may be that the other um, other stock, since the stock updated, it it is already going to that finish. So uh, I'll have to either suppress or otherwise um, have that machine come out um, or have that operation come out of the mix. We'll leave the def well on the off chance. <laughs> I'm not going to let it uh, let it get too crazy there. All right, so dynamic rough. We don't really have anything. So like I said, I haven't seen this one before, so it's kind of nice. We'll be using that later on for uh, the next the uh, next couple assignments that have that internal grooving that it can uh, go in and and uh, manage that geometry. All right, so no toolpath. Uh, do you wish to keep? No, I don't need to keep that operation. All right, so lathe tool pass will go into the finish. We're still going to pick our last and OK. All right, so same thing, 2000. For the, um, we're running spindle speed, constant spindle or surface feed of 400. I'm going to bump it up a little bit. For the, um, for the uh, RPM and we're going to go down a little bit lower, so maybe uh, 2,000s for the cleanup if we're looking for a really, um, uh, really nice finish. All right, finish parameters, 100 thousandths uh, step over, one finish pass. If we need spring, spring passes or additional, we'll come back and pick those up. And then uh, stock to leave, nothing in X, nothing to leave in Z. And our lead out 180 degrees, still have the 40 degree by 100, uh, 45 degrees by 100 thousandths. And at this point, we've, we've removed enough material that we probably won't have to, uh, to worry about it. The other thing would be, I mentioned uh, possibly doing the cutoff or the parting tool. Four and a half inches is a little scary for a parting tool. All right, even you know, the most rigid uh, parting tool is going to start to uh, load up, have that wobble. Uh, going to be a little bit scary. So on this one, if we're holding on to the stock, I could make a pretty good case for we figure out what's going to hold our tolerances. We flip it around and we just set up a machining operation that's going to remove that extra extra material. So that's one that would have to be decided is if this was our, our finished shape is how we're going to separate if we're going to run the cutoff tool. If I needed to, the cutoff tool would go into a pecking operation that would be about 10 thousandths per. So it would peel that chip off, eject it, clear it out of the groove, 
and probably stop a little bit short just because I'm still worried about that big honking piece uh, uh, spinning uh, spinning faster as it gets. And then, you know, the other thing would be we've been setting up, um, well, let's go ahead and put it in. Doesn't mean we have to use it. Uh, so if I'm going to do the uh, the cutoff, and the thing we're going to run into is on that um, on that tool, you know, all of these uh, these geometries, just like we had to do last time. I'm going to have to extend this out if we're doing four and a half inch diameter. I'm going to have to extend this tool out two and three quarters. Otherwise, it's going to show the tool holder grooving in, colliding in, running into the uh, into the stock. So that being the case. Uh, it doesn't really matter which one we pick. Uh, probably eighth inch is going to be the, the most standard. And then if I double click on it, uh, we have our single end. Probably would switch to a little bit of uh, uh, the chamfered relief to bring it a little closer to a point. On the, uh, the holder, Let's see which one has the um, the effect. Is I think we changed E last time from half an inch. Let's see if we change uh, the B dimension. Well, that one's saying six inches overall. The C. Let's go up to um, uh, two point eight. All right, and then instead of um, the uh, the spindle speed, I'm just going to set an RPM. A fairly slow RPM, so that again I'm not scaring myself. Uh, feed rate two and a half thousandths of an inch per revolution. So feed in and retract out um, the max, just to be on the safe side, 200. And cutoff parameters entry amount of a hundred thousandths gives us the uh, the clearance incremental. We said probably about 10 thousandths so that it pulls that chip and ejects it. Because you think about 10 thousandths going in for one revolution, that's still going to be a pretty monstrous chip. Um, and then uh, cut to the, um, the front radius. That should be all right. Radius uh, X tangent point. So if it's going to the... Um, uh, to a through bore where it's going to uh, to stop when it runs into that geometry. And let's, um, you know, I think even a quarter inch it's going to start to wobble and uh, uh, have some issues. So let's back it off a little bit and uh, see what that works from. All right, so that keeps it away from completely breaking off. Uh, which means that I, you know, if, if I if that tool survives that long, that we would be able to take it over to the bandsaw and nibble through the last little bit, face that off. The other thing I didn't do was leave 10 or 20 thousandths of material to chuck this up and take that facing pass off the back. But again, these are part of our decision process that when we sit down to program this, you know, and I'm running running through these um, these processes. You know, what, uh, what have we done in the past? What are we currently doing? Who's run these last? Um, you know, what, what are our, uh, our acceptables uh, going to work from? All right, so apparently I rotated over because that little green line is annoying me. So let's go back to Control or Alt-1. All right, so I'm looking down. All right, so pretty much that'll be the assignment. Um, you know, again, I, I think the, uh, the optional part would be the, um, the cutoff. And my concern is that deep grooving, there are tools that will make it that far. Got to keep those, uh, those inserts sharp and, uh, you know, and, and then really watch it because that's, that's really something that could tear up, uh, uh, tear up a lot of stuff. All right. So one of the, uh, the things we wanted to put in here and we'll, um, go back into the lathe tool paths. If we go into the drill. And what I did not find last time is that when we go to the library tool and we open the folder, you have all of these to pick from. So groove, groove turn. Uh, there are a lot of items in here to, uh, to search through. And so the L drill, uh, it's probably small. Okay, going to have to do a little deciphering. Uh, maybe open up a couple of these, see what you get. 
All right, so we open that up. We have the uh, the center drill. Let's see, we want none and just the drills. All right, so if I was going to uh, to set this up, then I think last time, well, we're at a a, a one inch on the end, so I should be able to put a half twenty in there pretty easily. Uh, Three thirty one. I was going to set up for either the four thirteen or the four thirty three. Let's go with a little bit larger, and we'll see what it uh, what it does. All right, and they went to inches per minute, so pretty much a uh, a peck. Even with the drills, I still kind of like the uh, the inch per revolution a little better. Spindle speed for that one um, for thirty three, probably going to be in the um, fifteen sixteen hundred range. Now go ahead and max it just or make it match for the uh, the sake of. And then like we we're saying with the uh, the drill, depending on how much the drill bit extends beyond the um, um, the number one insert tool, you know we went up to tool number three. And it wasn't oh the cutoff tool became tool number two. Was, um, so you know maybe that one goes up to four. If I already have these loaded up in the uh, the machine. Then chances are I will have my, um, you know, standard 85 degree, 55 degree, or 35 degree uh, insert, and then the threading tool, and then the um, uh, the cutoff tool for standard grooving, and then I would want to start spacing these out a little bit. All right, so simple drill, no peck, uh, drill and counterbore. We'll go over to the peck drill depth. Now, depending on um, on the cycle we pick, in this case, did we center drill? Is it going to be um, be able to uh, to keep this on uh, on the same center line? And uh, the first uh, first peck uh, that um, we need, let's just go for a depth of about two inches. And the first peck, if I were to make that a half inch, that chip should be cleared. And then um, when we get to the uh, the machine, if we see the I, J, and K, the I is the initial, the J is the reduction, and the K is the final. So I'm looking, I'm, you know, if I'm not quite sure what I'm telling it to do here, that um, uh, when I see this code output, which is going to be a function of the post processor, that when I see that I, J, and K, I can make those slight modifications and come back and and manipulate this a little bit more. So subsequent peck of um, you know hundred thousandths, and we'll see if that reduces it um, to our uh, to our mix. All right. So drill point, and we had the uh, the depth zero and z clearance of 0.25, retract of a hundred thousandths, and then no custom parameters. So we'll see what that generates. All right, and so still expecting it to uh, pull out the update stock. So did not see the drill point. Let's go over to nope, not quite. Hmm. Is that right. Because I think she cut it off. Yeah, I probably thinks so I cut it off. <laughs> before maybe that one. Yeah, if it's not there when it uh, when it does it, no. Let's see, let's ghost that one out just in case and turn off the. <laughs> All right. Okay, so let's. Um, like I said, I'm expecting to see the half inch drill with the drill point. And let's go ahead and put the uh, the tap in and get that set up, and we'll diagnose uh, this later. So this is still going to be a drill operation. We're going to go back to the uh, the library, and should see lathe taps. All right, so somewhere in there we got the uh, the mix. We'll get up to the uh, the half twenty. Oh, let's see, I picked 433. That's going to be kind of in between, so half 13. Sorry, I've been saying half 20 on the brain. All right, 
So verify your tap drills, match your tap. <laughs> Since I'm being a little uh, little dangerous, so we went to from tool two to tool four. I'm going to bump that up to tool six. Make sure the offset numbers match and um, feed rate. Yeah, not not 41. Well, I'm going to slow it down then. Um, where did we get to? So for the uh, oh yeah for the uh, for the tap, uh, if we go 130, then we'll see about 10 inches uh, per minute. So I'm not quite sure about the 996 unless there's a rounding error in the uh, tool definition. And we'll set the max on that one as well. All right, and then we pick up our tapping cycle. No dwell. Depth will be, you know, we're still planning on this to be a, um, a spiral point uh, tap. So uh, we're expecting the chip to be uh, pushing ahead of the tap. So uh, we'll leave room for the pack up of, yeah, that's probably what I did is I told it was positive, didn't I? Okay, so pay attention to your signs, and I'll just go minus one and a half to see what it does, and we'll also see if it warns me about the impending collision. All right, so close. Yeah, I don't think I got those numbers just right. <laughs> All right, so let's go back into the drill before I, uh, I crack myself up here. All right, we'll regenerate. All right, so I made all those changes to the uh, the numbers and four, starting at zero. Why did it shift back? Oh, we did shift back to X and Y because it was in the drill. Okay, now I got to go watch the video and see when that happened. All right, so under the uh, the planes, yep, it shifted back to the top. So when I did that um, Alt-1 and kind of flipped everything around looking for it, if it went back into my top view, my WCS, my construction, and my tool plane, something to watch out for. So let's go ahead and um, we'll set those guys. And I still have something going on, but I feel a little bit better about it. So... Adjust accordingly. Uh, I'm going to say go ahead and, and set into the uh, uh, the DZ with the uh, the lathe for your uh, for your orientation, and uh, I will probably do another addendum to this, um, correcting for uh, for those geometries. But do watch out for those uh, those diameters. Okay, so I went back through the, the sequence and double checked my numbers. And you can see the previous stock once you realize and made the mistake. And what we're going to check for, that one doesn't look like it, uh, it went where it was supposed to. So I'm going to do one more F4. And we are going from 0 to 1. Okay, and that looks better. All right, so since the uh, the stock, when I highlight the, uh, the toolpath group and go ahead and regenerate the dirty operations, then... My toolpaths updated. Let's go ahead and take a look at those and see if they are still going where they're supposed to. We just have a little bit of uh, separation in the um, in the toolpath, so or between the uh, the stock and where the toolpaths ended up. So I got to figure out where um, where that stock is uh, being generated at. But we make the uh, the corrections and it will update. Okay, so one more uh, quick note is that the uh, the stock didn't update. I was hitting the um, uh, regenerate all dirty operations. We need to regenerate all selected operations so that it updates the uh, the stock, and then it will show those uh, those views. So one of the things with the uh, the verify then is this is going to come in, and I believe I've already said it. We're going to do the verify. You want to look at your XY clipping plane so that we are clipping the uh, the top. If it's off, you're not going to see that uh, that preview. So if I clip the top, 
and we rotate around a little bit then hit play it's going to show us the cross-section view so we'll be able to see that interior geometry as well as the exterior profiles and as it picks up the uh, the drill routines and we'll see those as well